In today's session, we will explore what is gradient descent, what is stochastic uh, gradient descent algorithm is all about at a high level. And also we'll take a look at how to implement them using uh, Python, okay? And then followed by this, we will take a look at, you know, how to derive the equation for a gradient descent algorithm in, in detail. I'll start with, uh, let us first understand what is gradient descent is all about. So gradient descent is an algorithm. Uh, it is an iterative optimization algorithm. It is very much helpful to minimize the cost of your algorithm or machine learning model. So what do you mean by minimizing the cost? So one of the uh, main objective of machine learning algorithms is to reduce the cost. What is cost? Cost is nothing but the error. Okay, what is the error? Error is, we know very well, if you subtract the predicted value from the actual value, and if I, right, so this is what your error. So we call this equation as a mean squared, mean absolute error or mean, so uh, this is your mean squared error, right? So we take, we square the error. Basically, the actual minus predicted will give you the error. And we square the error and you divide uh, this by the total number of um, data points in your data set. So this is what your cost. See, henceforth, if I say cost, it is nothing but error. Because uh, in practice, most of them, they use the term cost instead of saying error. And there are few, they refer uh, loss function, cost or loss. Loss or cost, L-O-S-S. Either loss or cost, but most of the time they use the term cost. The whole objective of um, any machine learning algorithm is to minimize or reduce the cost. Uh, when we use uh, this algorithm, so the gradient descent algorithm is helpful in terms of minimizing the cost, ideally, you know, somewhat close to zero. Okay. Okay. This is the given data set. Look at this. This is the given data set and uh, these are, it's a training data set. Okay. As you can see here, um, for this uh, given size and UDS, this is the price, housing price. Okay. The house, the size of the house, and undivided share of the house. For this, this is the actual price given uh, by the realtor. For the same um, size and UDS, for the same size and UDS, the estimated or the predicted value of the housing price is nineteen point one six eight for this record. Right. And similarly, for the second record, for this given size and UDS, this is the actual price, this is the predicted value. The difference between the actual and predicted, if you subtract the predicted value from the actual, you will get the cost, which is nothing but the error, actual minus predicted. So what we do is we square the error. Why do we have to square the error? Because if you want to take the sum of squared error, if you want to total all these values, the positive and negative value will get subtracted. We don't want that to happen. Hence, we are squaring each and every error for each and every uh, sample or each and every record, we are squaring the error so that the minus into minus will become plus. So the, you know, you will get the square. When you see the square, squared error, it's all positive value. Okay, and uh, if you take the, sorry, this is your, uh, right, so this is what your sum of squared error. If you take the sum, right, if you take the sum total, because squared error, we squared the error, and then if you take the sum, you will get some value. If you add all this value, you get the value. You will get some uh, total value, okay, the sum of squared error. Now, let us visualize this in a, you know, in a chart, okay. So in this case, um, the blue circle represents the price. The blue represents the price, the blue color, okay? And uh, that is the, uh, this is the actual value, okay? So what is the predicted value? What is the predicted value? When I fit this line, so the, this is what you were predicted. The predicted values lies on top of this line, okay? The equation for this line is y equal to mx plus b. So different... Uh, mm -hmm. Website, you can see different notation. This is your intercept. This is your slope. Sorry, this, yeah, this is what your slope, and this is what your intercept. So, like this line, oh, one second. This is like this line. I can draw different lines. Of these different lines, 
which one is the best fit line i have drawn three lines of these three lines which one is the best fit line how the best fit line is determined the best fit line is nothing but the line that gives us the lesser error that is what best fit line lesser error the line the best fit line which gives us the lesser error is called your best fit line this error is called as cost that's what we discussed a while back so we want the cost uh, should be minimum okay we want the cost should be minimum so uh, see what uh, we do as part of um, gradient descent algorithm is we what we do is we uh, as part of uh, gradient descent algorithm we keep changing the value of m and b we keep changing the value of this m and b see in the case of uh, typical linear regression this is the equation this is the equation we use it to um this is the equation which we use it to get the predicted value for example in this case right so what is the the intercept intercept value is already computed by model my model gave me this and we don't have to compute it manually slope also computed by my model and uh, slope the for, for slope for size got computed we got it from our model and in this case uh, the slope for uds also we got it from our model simply please if you plug in the values right so the slope is 0.04 and 0.01 0.18 for the uds this is the slope and if i multiply this value with uh, the uds what is this uh, 230.1 see slope is 0.04 and size is the first record 230.1 and for, for, for uds the slope is 0.18 and value for the uds is 37.8 if you simply plug in uh, you know these values the slope is already estimated by model the size and uds is available in the data set if you estimate this you will get so if you so if you plug in the values you will get the predicted value so in this case if you you know if you uh, some if you solve this you will get 19.16 right okay uh, this is what you are predicted value right the y gives us the predicted value this is what uh, i discussed at the very first uh, session of the linear regression model okay now the objective is now the question is okay uh, look here if you look at this line here, here again right to find out the best fit line right so um, what is needed what is required to find out the best fit line what is required we need the optimal value for m and we need the optimal value for b for example in this case for example uh, let's see this is uh, one line i've been drawn and the intercept is somewhat here right so let's say the intercept is um, 4 and if i draw another line you know it touches the y axis here the i say you know this is the the intercept value is 3 and slope is uh, you know you know some value right so for this the slope is you know like this and for this the slope is you know like this if i draw another line and this line is probably 3.2 and slope is, it has some slope value now i call this as a best fit line because this line uh, is uh, close to as many data points as possible right and uh, and also right if you find out the distance between all the values and the predicted values for this line the error is less compared to other lines so the best fit line right um, how did we get the best fit line for the specific intercept on the specific uh, slope value we are able to get the best fit line the line which gives us a lesser error right is um, you know determined by the optimal value of the intercept and the slope got it okay so the idea here is uh, fine but uh, in the case of linear regression algorithm it uses the ordinary least square method right so oily ordinary least square or oils ordinary least square method to estimate the value for optimal value for m and b okay okay so now uh, we use a linear the gradient descent algorithm okay so for example by keep changing the value of m and b in the idea of gradient descent algorithm is by keep changing the value of m and b see for this specific uh, uh, intercept and slope 
we are able to get the predicted value for this record. For the second record, we are able to get this value, right? So the whole idea is by, you know, in this case, see for this line, for this line, okay, I call this a line A and uh, I call the line B and line C. For line A, the intercept is different from line C is line, right? And for uh, line B, intercept is different from line A. Similarly, the slope. Okay, by keep changing the value of um, slope and the intercept, we, sorry, right? the whole idea is we keep changing the value of M and B and see for which value of M and B we are able to obtain the best fit line. See, it is easier say, said than done. If let's say you know, imagine that if we norm, if we manually keep changing the values for this M and B, what will happen? Do you think uh, that we should be able to? find out the optimal value of the M and B in order to get the best fit line? Yes, you should be, but how many number of times you will change the values for M and B, right? You need, for example, first you need to start with some value for M. So in this case, um, the, for a, you know, right? So here the M is, this is my M, right? This is my intercept value. You keep changing the value for uh, the M and C. Right, so 0 0.04, 3.1. So next you will change it to some other value, right? But and then what you do is, let's you know first uh, you use this value M and C, and what is the predicted value? You just assume that we don't have UDS for the sake of simplicity. I am going to remove this part, okay? And now you have only one independent variable for this. The slope is M here, okay? So you need to mark. so when you keep changing the value for the slope and um, intercept, right? You will be getting the best fit line, but uh, how many number of times you have to do it by you know changing the values for M and C in order to get the best fit line. For example, in this case, this is the slope value and this is the intercept. And if you plug in this value, you get the predicted value. And then you need to check uh, for this given M and C slope and intercept, what is the error? Next, you change the value for the slope and intercept and then uh, you will plug in the values here and then you will get the predicted value, different predicted value. So in that case, the error will be different. By keep changing, you need to keep, by, by keep changing the value for MNC, right? For each and every time you need to find out the error. And for, um, for a specific value of MNC, right? You will tend to get lesser error, right? Let's assume that you will tend to get, you know, get error. But if you do it manually, what will happen? You will be, keep changing the value forever in order to get the less error. Well, the whole objective of changing the value uh, for M and C, keep changing the value for M and C is we want to find out for which value of M and C the error is less. So what is the step that we do it? First, we, you know, as I just repeat one more time, see, this is your um, slope value. This is our intercept value. For this given intercept and slope, uh, if you plug in here, you will get a predicted value. And then if you subtract the predicted value from the actual value, you'll get the error. Okay, and you, you note down here, okay, this is the error. And the next time you change the value for M and C, right? So you will probably, you know, you will uh, gradually increase the value. Okay, and uh, you plug in the value and you will get uh, the predicted value for that specific M and C. And then you will subtract, uh, you know, the predicted value for the new M and C from your actual value and you will get a different error. You need to compare that error with this error, okay? So if that you know, error is goes down, then you are good. But how long you keep doing it? If you do it manually, you will have to do it forever, okay? So that is where the gradient descent algorithm comes into play. So using that algorithm, right, uh, we should be able to minimize the cost function or uh, the cost. Look at this um, animated thing. Look at the M and B. So in this case, B is nothing but C. Okay, I call it the B is an intercept. So look here, he is keep changing the M and B, the value for M and B. And then he is plugging here. Look here, 1.36, 1 point, look here, whatever value is there, you just plug in here, okay? And by keep changing the value, what happens? The line, right, it gets converged. Converged in the sense, we are able to look here, it's for this given M and B, it was, initially it was here, right? A gradually it goes, you know, it moves up, for every change in value of M and B, and ultimately it fits this data, uh, you know, it fits the data very well. 
right? The line, the sweet line. This is the best sweet line. Okay. Uh, now the question is, um, if I do it manually, uh, right? So it'll, you know, I will have to keep doing it um, forever because uh, sometimes you may, it may curve because we do not know what value you need to use it here, right? What value you need to keep change it? You do not know. Either you need to increase or decrease it. And, uh, you know, if I wanted to increase it, you know, how much value should I increase? You do not know, right? That is where the gradient descent algorithm comes into picture. Okay, that is where the gradient descent algorithm comes into picture. One second. So what I will do is, okay. So in this case, what we do is the, uh, the use, using gradient descent algorithm, we start with a random point on the function and move in the negative direction of the gradient of the function to reach the local or the global minimum. Look at this, uh, uh, you know, image here. You just think, uh, you know, this is, um, this is a hill, okay? This is the hill. You are standing somewhere here. So that is what I said. We start with a random point on the function and move in the negative direction. Negative direction is the opposite direction. This is the positive direction. If you go in the upside, upward direction, that's the positive direction. If you go in the, uh, you know, if you go in this direction, this is called your downward, uh, you know, direction. This is a negative direction of the gradient, okay? And in order to reach the local minima, you need to move in the negative direction of the gradient of the function, okay, to get the local or the global minima. So this is what my local minima, where they call it as a local minima. What do you mean by local minima? This is what your minimum cost, the minimum error. The whole objective of this algorithm is reduce the error or minimize the cost. Okay. Okay. We will start with a simple analogy. With this, you should be able to understand how this algorithm is, uh, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, how we can reduce the error or cost using this, right? Using this analogy, you should be able to understand. Look here, currently, let's say you are standing uh, on top of a hill somewhere here. Okay. Let's say your eyes are blindfolded. Let's say you want to reach the downhill from point A to point B. So what is the point in, uh, you know, moving from uh, the point A to point B? You want to, only when you reach here, you can get the lower cost. The cost will be less. The challenge here is you cannot see the point B, uh, point B location from point A. So how can we reach point B? That is the question now. To reach point B, the possible action would be either he goes uh, upward or downward. But if he go upward, he cannot uh, reach the point B. Hence, he has to go in the downward direction and take one step at a time to eventually arrive in the valley or the point B. Okay, The point B is the location or the point B location is not at all visible uh, you know, uh, to him now. Okay, How can he get to point B? That is what the question now. Just give me a second. Simple common sense. Uh, for example, you are standing here. You want to reach this place. How will you come here? Your eyes are closed. How can you come down here? If you want to come down here, what are the things you need it? You, know, you need to know the direction, right? Number one is direction. Simple. Very simple. Which direction? If I go in this direction, I, the chances are high that I can reach this place. Instead, if you go in this direction, can you reach this place? You cannot, right? Similarly, if you go in this direction, uh, or let's say if you go in this direction, you will not. First of all, you cannot go here. Let's say you go this direction, right? So you can go in any direction, but you need to know, uh, you know, the correct direction. So first thing, you need to know the direction in order to reach uh, from point A to point B. So what is the other thing is required to reach uh, the point B location? What is the other thing you need? So you need to know the direction, right? And what is the other thing you need to do it? You need to know the step size. Can I take the longer step or can I take the smaller step? Second thing is you need to know the step size. So this is a longer step. This is a smaller step. 
you need to know this you know step size at each position let's say you are here currently and you moved you took one step and you moved to this position in this position you should know you know what is your step size and similarly right uh, when you are in this position you should be knowing the step size because the if you take the longer step look here like this if you take the longer step size you know like this right what will happen is you may tend to land here instead of reaching this place you may overshoot here hence you should be knowing the step size the first thing is you should be knowing the direction you should be knowing the step size in each and every position i repeat this for you know you are in this position currently from this position to take one step right you should be knowing one step forward you should be knowing what is which in which direction or which slope uh, you need to move and you know what is the step size okay when you look at this um, closely as uh, this person when he keeps moves down 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 here the step sizes are getting reduced right the steps it uh, you know getting it should get reduced right obviously if you take the same uh, step size which you used it the very first time what will happen the chances are high that you might overstep let's say your step size is too long so what will happen you will your your leg will land here instead of landing here so only when you uh, know this uh, direction for each of these steps uh, you can reach the point b at the earlier how will you now the next question is how will you know the direction there is a equ you know mathematical equation with this he can right so so the, the determining the direction we need to determine the direction which direction he has to you know get down from the from this position to next position okay so we determine the direction which is nothing but the you know gradient which is slope you should be knowing slope. see at this position this is the slope look here the dotted line this is the you know slope when i draw a line here right this is called your tangent line it is called your slope so once you know the slope and right that is what your gradient and then what you do is once you you, you know once you know the slope you multiply the slope by the sorry you slope by the step size in order to uh, you know uh, get the next uh, you know position to from this position to this position to get it you need to get to this position you need to know the direction and also you need to know the step size step size if you uh, if you uh, take the step size uh, uh, you know if let's say if you multiply the step size by gradient you will get to know the next position each step you need to know the direction as well as step size that's it the how will i uh, know the direction there, there is an equation for this this is the equation okay so this is called a uh, partial derivative so here in this case if you see here they have taken the partial derivative with respect to b right uh, this is the equation uh, with respect to the partial derivative different yeah this is your partial derivative with respect to m so here the partial derivative with respect to intercept this is the equation the partial derivative with respect to m is uh you know this is the equation at this moment let us not worry too much about this equation we you know after implementing uh the the gradient descent algorithm in python we will take a look at you know how the you know how to derive these two equations okay and next one is right this gradient the slope is helpful in terms of uh, you know determining the step size now if you think um uh, you know in detail each and every step what will happen is the slope gets changed right the gradient so instead of saying slope and direction i just use this term fancy term called gradient okay each and every position the gradient as well as the step size will be changing it obviously right here uh, the direction is this side this, this side and in this case the direction should go this way in this position the direction should be like this and each and every portion a direction as well as the step size will get keep changed that is the uh, you know whole idea of uh, this one okay so and another thing um, another point to note here is as you move closer to point b the step size uh, get 
reduced or should uh, reduced okay otherwise you might uh, either overshoot or it will take longer let's say if you take a smaller step it will take longer time to reach point b if you take a longer step uh, there could be chances that you you might overshoot okay see the gradient descent algorithm in the right so with this what we understood this gradient descent algorithm iteratively calculates the next point using the gradient at the current position and uh, you know scales it by learning rate and subtracts the obtained value from the subtract the obtained value from the next position from the uh, previous position from the current position this is your current position and you are multiplying the learning rate the step size by your gradient so this is the one you need to compute it here okay that is what we are doing it here once we get this value you simply plug in here and you multiply this by your step size and um, right and if you subtract this from your current position you will get to know the next position that is the whole idea of this one at this moment don't worry about this when i implement it in python you should be able to understand it now let us quickly uh, let's take a quick look at uh, the steps what are the steps that we need to follow in order to implement the gradient descent algorithm in python you can use any language but uh, you know i will show you in python okay so the first step is you need to initialize the weights what do you mean by weight weights the intercept and slope you need to initialize the weights with some random values and then calculate the sum of squared error as i told you a while back uh, in the equation y equal to mx plus b the m and uh, b right or mx plus c yeah the intercept and slope we need to keep change the value but in order to keep change the value right we to start with we come up with some random value okay we initialize the m and b value you know with some random value for that value what is the corresponding error we are getting it okay this is the first step and second step is we need to find out the gradient and uh, once you get the gradient value you need to multiply the gradient so this is the gradient you need to multiply the gradient with the learning rate this is the alpha uh, this is your hyperparameter don't worry about this thing and you need to subtract this one from this one the the old uh, you know step in order to get the or the current position uh, from the current position you need to subtract this one in order to get your next step okay next the size for the next step and these two steps needs to be repeated okay these two steps needs to be uh, repeated uh, till your loss function is very small okay before that what we do is we keep update this weight okay use the so we need to keep update the weights why we need to update this weight because each and every step look here in this case each and every step let's see currently you are in this position to move to the next position you need to know the new value for the step and new value for the slope new value for the slope and new value for the step right how do you know that you need to and each and every position you need to keep changing the value by updating the values for your m and slope and intercept this is the one okay and these two steps right so you need to carry out and uh, see here in this case we need to use the new weights for prediction and to calculate the new ssc and right and then what we do is we do these two steps repetitively or iteratively until the error is very small or ideally uh, you know till it becomes zero which means uh, further adjustment to your look here mx plus c further adjustment to you know these two this is what they call as a weight right they use different terms don't get confused weight means you know m and c Okay, for, you know, uh, right. So, for further adjustment to weights doesn't significantly reduce the error, uh, right? So, um, we can say that way also. See, you need to keep iteratively doing these two steps until uh, you know you uh, get the minimal error. That is the whole objective of gradient descent. Now, we will go ahead and see how we can implement in the Python.
as usual i just import um, all the basic uh, thing right the numpy Uh, next, what I do is um, I want to do some kind of simple pre-processing input data. I call this as a data mm, uh, pd dot csv colon. I have something called data dot csv file. I'll just show you what is there in this data set. And in this case, what I do is I'm going to use a variable called x data dot i locate and um, comma zero so in this data set i just have two columns the first column is uh, the uh, independent variable and second column is your dependent variable so this is another way of uh, you know splitting right uh, uh, the splitting your independent dependent variable so my variable x holding the independent variable so i'm left with only one uh, column here right so the other column all the rows from the first column. The This one says all the rows from the first column. Sorry, okay, this is all the rows from second column. Okay, and what I do is um, plt dot scatter s comma y and plt dot show. I'm going to just plot this to see whether, you know, these two variables are linearly correlated or not. I'm going to use shift and enter. Okay, if you fit a line here, it is more or less like, you know, so there is, this, you know, the, the relationship exists between the independent dependent variable because we can see something like this, right? Upward turn the pattern, we can see like this. Now what we do is uh, we will go back here and implement these, uh, you know, for, you know, three steps. Okay. And um, yeah, four, five steps, right. We will implement, we convert all these five steps into Python code. So what I do is the first thing you need to initialize the value for initialize the value of M and B. And here I say M equal to C equal to zero in one line, we can say like this, right. In Python, we can do it this way. I just initialize the um, value for M and B. What is M? M is my slope and B is my intercept. And the next one is uh, I'm going to initialize the number of steps. So they call this as you know, uh, the steps also called as, uh, called as an iterations or some people they call it as an epochs. Okay, how many number of um, steps or iterations that are required, right? So to iteratively compute the gradient as well as updating the values for both M and B, right? How many number of steps that are required? That is what we need to, you know, define it. And epochs. I'm going to say thousand, the number of iterations to perform the gradient okay and the next one is i'm going to define the number of data points number of data points i'm going to say n here i say float of len of x or you can use a shape uh, of uh, zero okay initialize the learning rate nothing but your step size okay initially the step size is uh, I, I call the learning rate is l so use a smaller value for learning rate okay if you use a bigger value uh, it will take longer time and if you uh, sorry if you use a bigger value it will not convert if you use a very very small value it will take longer time Right. So we will start with some, you know, some this value 0 0.001. Now what we do is the second uh, step two and three, you know, so we need to iterate 
these two steps to compute the gradient as well as the find out the to update the weights because each and every iteration we need to get the uh, you know new value for your um, m and b intercept and slope so in order to perform iteratively so what do you mean by iteratively here so repeatedly right so because for this step what is the gradient and uh, what is the step size and in this position for each position is nothing but steps nothing but the iteration in each iteration uh, what is the uh, we need to uh, you know get the we need to compute the gradient once you compute the gradient you will be able to get the next size you need to keep changing the values for uh, you know the intercept and slope and at each position right so in order to you know uh, take multiple step right you cannot reach uh, with one or two steps right in requires multiple steps hence it requires multiple iterations which is nothing but the epochs so here for i n range i'm using a for loop e p o c h s so here uh, i'm going to use this equation y is equal to uh, the y pred okay i'm going to what i do is i just uh, use um, y underscore pred is equivalent to m into x plus my intercept so i want to find out uh, the the predicted value okay the current predicted value of y right so we need to uh, start with to predict the value for y right so we need to find out the predicted value and the next one is i'm going to you find out the cost what is for the predicted value for a specific um, m and n the slope and intercept for uh, for or e for each uh, slope and intercept uh, what is the predicted value only when you get the predicted value you should be able to find out the error because subtracting the predicted value from your actual value you will get the error which is nothing but my cost right so here in this case uh, we are going to find out the mean squared error so sum of i'm going to use list comprehension here what i do is I use something called val squared uh, i'm going to use for val in i'm going to say y is my actual value and this y pred is my predicted value right i'm going to subtract the actual value from the predicted value so that i can get uh, the error and if i square this error right i'll get uh, the sum of squared error and if you divide by n you will get uh, the mean squared error also right and the next one is um, now we need to calculate the gradient of the slope and uh, right and the bias we need to find out that one okay now let's um, basically right uh, in order to find that the gradient uh, we need to find the partial derivatives with respect to m and c this is what i'm i'm talking about we need to take the partial derivative why why we need to take the partial derivative because when you take the partial derivative only when you take the partial derivative you should be able to find out the slope right i'm talking about these two equations this is for your intercept and this is for your slope for intercept and slope we are taking the partial derivative next right? so i am going to simply convert this equation in python code see how i do it here so what i do is um, i just say you know do by partial derivative they use the term do do f okay here uh, you know they use something like um, do f by do b something like that, okay and uh, do m so uh, for that i use d m is equal to i simply convert this equation minus 2 divided by n into what is this one um y actual minus the predicted so this is nothing but predicted value so you know very well uh, y is equal to mx plus b look here what is this y equal to mx plus c and here the cost is right uh, here 
simply be y minus the predicted value y minus the predicted value which is nothing but the right side if you plug in the value you will get the predicted value right simply what they do is uh, mx plus c instead of saying predicted value you plug in the right side of the equation here mx plus c right and um, the b is uh, that is a different thing okay this is the equation and here in this case what i do is minus 2 divided simply i will convert this one okay here what i do is um, sum of x into y minus y pred and next one is partial derivative for my intercept minus 2 divided by n don't worry about this equation we will see how we how we can derive this equation now after this okay You can ignore uh, the B here, okay, Y equal to, uh, okay, so this is correct. In this case, B, right, correct. Uh, the, on the right side of the equation, Y equal to MX plus B is there, right? That is the one, okay. Here, not C, okay, it is B, okay. Don't get confused with this. And because the different terminologies, MX plus B, MX, M into XI plus B, that is what this one, okay. So that is what I just did it here. So what minus two divided by n, minus two divided by n. So the what is y i? That is what uh, the um, okay. So for here, okay, this is the one, right? The first one is this. You know, I did it here. Okay, so two minus two. Okay, I understood. This is two, right? Uh, thanks, Jiva. Two by n, and here the actual value, and then the predicted value. That is what I mentioned here. And for this one, the second equation, this is for your, from, for your M. And here minus 2 divided by N, your Xi into this value, okay? Xi into this value. So in this case, the X is uh, my independent variables already we defined, right? So X into the, this one, right? Actual minus predicted value. Correct? So we are able to, convert that equation to Python like this. The next step is, um, what is the next step? The next step is we need to update the weights, okay? And what I do is I say M is equal to M minus learning rate into D divided by M. And I just use C here, C minus L into D underscore C. First, we need to know the direction. For this, we compute the gradient. What we do is for M and C, for the slope and intercept, we are using the corresponding gradient. This is my gradient, right? So what we, if you, uh, you know, multiply this uh, gradient value for your M by learning rate, and if you subtract this from M, you will get the changed value for your M Sim, the same thing is applicable here. Okay, look here in this case, we already computed the gradient. We are multiplying the gradient by the learning rate. And when you subtract this one from your current position, you will get to know the next position. Okay, this is what we are doing. So the finally, what I do is I just use the print function m
iteration. We want to see each iteration, what is the cost and what is the value for slope and intercept. Format m comma c comma cost comma i. Then I am done with this very simple one. I just um, I, you know the pre invalid syntax D. I uh, you know C here. What is the problem here? Uh, D underscore C. Line twenty. So how do I check which line I have an error? In Python, uh, Jupyter Notebook, press escape and L. It will show you the line number, the 20th. And also we can see it here very clearly, right? So invalid syntax error. And what is the problem? Closing bracket is uh, missing, right? Good. Um, here, um, it's correct, right? So where is the closing bracket? So two divided by N into sum of, uh, um, Yeah, yeah, this is where, right? The mistake is good, right? So yeah, very good, uh, Gilbert. Right, so line 19, because the line 19, yeah. No, it's correct, right? One second, let me just. So this one is for this, and this one is for this. You mean to say that, yeah, now we are, X is not defined. We have uh, some other problem here. This is not small X, this is a capital X. Right, that is what my, let me go one thing. We prayed, okay, here the, okay, let me do one thing here, here M A X plus C, capital value, capital letter, it should supposed to be N is not defined. Total number of records. Right, thread is not defined. Why put to Y underscore thread? Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, it's a lot of mistakes here. And here, uh, Y thread, right? So, yeah, so line number 20, Y underscore thread. My God, at last we are able to get this one, right? So we are able to fix it. Oh, thanks guys. Sumiti, thanks, okay, good. So there is a there was a lot of uh, typo here. Good, we initialize the value for M and B and then we define the number of iterations, right? So, you, so there is a question here, right? You might be having, so why thousand? Why cannot be 10,000? You can use more number of iterations, but the higher the value use it, it will take longer time, okay? And we, again, we don't need uh, you know bigger value. Start with small, okay, probably thousand, and then next uh, we need to find out the total number of records, and then I initialize the learning rate with uh, you know the smaller value, 0 0.0001. And next, what we do is we iteratively compute the value for uh, gradient for both uh, M and C, the intercept and slope. And then what we do is we multiply this uh, gradient, the obtained or computed uh, gradient for both M and C by the learning rate. And then each iteration, what happens is you will get new value for M and C. So for this one, you will get new value for each iteration, you, get, uh, you know, new value for the M and C. Okay, look here. Now uh, I just printed the slope and the intercept along with this, I have, uh, define, you know, I have printed the cost and in iteration zero, what is the cost, right? So if you scroll down here, so this is my iteration zero. So how many number of iterations uh, it's supposed to do? So epochs, I defined it as thousand, thousand iteration you should have done. When you keep move down here, look here, uh, triple uh, one here, it started with uh, 5,000 and it keeps reducing the error, right? The cost is getting less, 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 less here. And if you see here 0 0.07432 become 113x, okay, keep reading. Let's go at the bottom 999th iteration. We will take a look at here. Look here at this point, the cost got reduced, right? Uh, and 11.11.011450 um, and 
okay, 0 0.11.0109, right? At iteration 99, the error got reduced from five, you know, initially we, you know, we started uh, getting 5,000 from 5,000 to look here, this is the one. 5,600 from 5,600 to it got reduced to 11. But uh, even in 11, right? So when you keep looking at 11, triple 1.011, uh, 0408 and uh, 01 and uh, 09. This 10 zero became 09. It is not at, uh, you know, uh, stable. Okay. It is not a stable. But with, so with this, what we can understand is with a thousand iterations, we could still that, we can still see that the error is, the chances are that, right? Uh, if you increase the iteration, the error can further get reduced. The cost can get reduced okay with the randomly chosen uh, value thousand for the iteration see the iteration and learning rate these two are hyper parameter this you know this can be tuned by the data scientist and we are the ones supposed to tune it okay so now the question is yes uh, this is the final value right this is the uh, intercept uh, and uh, slope value for this minimized cost. For this minimized cost, this is the one. Okay, now uh, what we will do is, um, we will make some prediction for this, because for this intercept and slope, the you know, if I plug in these two values, right? Uh, the last one, right? The minimized one. So these, because the cost for this uh, slope and error is very less at the 999th uh, iteration, Right, so since, okay, with this, what we can understand is for this um, inter slope and intercept, the error is less. With this intercept value and the slope value, if I make a prediction, uh, let us see what happens, okay? I just use Y underscore pred here outside is equivalent to M into our x plus uh, c and what we do is we will plot it in a chart and see it how best it fits plt dot lot what i do is i use min of x I say color is equal to red. Okay, here there is a problem. Okay, oh, here I made a mistake, right? Correct. So now we can see that, uh, you know, for this given data, for this given independent variable, the line has been fitted very well. For this given slope and intercept, you know, the line is fitting very well, right? Good. Hope you understood, um, you know, so how to um, implement the gradient descent algorithm. It is pretty simple because, uh, you know, already this someone has invented, you know, or they came up with this equation for, uh, or this algorithm, right? So for this algorithm, with this algorithm, you know, we are able to implement it. So with these equations, right, we are able to find out the optimal value for M and B. With that optimal value of M and B, when we make a prediction, right, we can see that it is fitting very well. The line is you know, very good, right? It's fitting all the data. It's covering all the data. So the next one is the, okay, the next step is, okay, instead of writing this way, right, 
uh, what we can do is we can uh, define uh, in a we can uh, implement some kind of modularity so what we do is a simple thing uh, i just um, create this one as a function okay def gradient descent and i what i do is um, x comma y or you can use any variable here okay simply what we need to do is you need to select all these things and just press one tab because you need to give indent uh, in the case of uh, this one right and if i click on this uh, i should not get any error very good and the next step is it will just create another cell and say gradient and let's go descent so you can improve this further i just share this script you all guys don't worry uh, i will gradient i was traveling all along okay i will share the script look here now all you need to do is just pass the x and y value to this function right that's it so we made it pretty decent instead of uh, you know writing it just like that right we so we need to have some kind of modularity but further right you can uh, you can create uh, you can simplify this right or you can make it more modular for example cost right uh, for this you create a simple separate function right so what it is you call that function for each iteration you store the cost here okay and then uh, with that uh, you know uh, kind of cost history okay store the uh, cost for each and every iteration see it is available here but um, when i print it here uh, here right so you you, so, you know all these cost are not uh, stored uh, right somewhere right you can store all the cost in a list or so okay and for that what you do is you create a separate function compute uh, cost okay so what you do is for each iteration you return the value uh, you know the uh, you can return the value of the cost and store it in a you know some uh, array or something like that okay so any of uh, the simplifying this right uh, i have already written some other function i will start it with share it with you all so you can try uh, that script okay so this is very pretty simple way of simple and straightforward way of implementing the gradient descent algorithm in um, python the next one is uh, the stochastic gradient descent there are three types of uh, gradient descent algorithm the one is batch gradient descent the other one is stochastic gradient uh, descent algorithm and um, okay um, batch in the case of batch gradient descent what we are what we have explored what we have implemented so far is batch gradient descent in this case it computes the uh, you know gradient based on the entire data set okay in this case i did not use training and test split let's say you have splitted the given data set into training and test set so in that case you need to compute the gradient based on the entire training set if the if your training set is uh, having a lot of data in it or samples in it it takes a lot of time to converge it what do you mean by converge it converge in it to get the minimum value right to, to minimum cost so in this case uh, still what you can do is you can experiment it by one second i just expand this you can increase the iteration okay you can increase the iteration and see uh, if you are able to get if the cost is stabilizing somewhere so how do i make sure that uh, you know the number of iterations are sufficient right how do you so we can plot it in a chart that chart can help you to identify uh, how many number of uh, with how many number of iterations Uh, you will be able to stabilize the cost but simple thing is if you increase the iteration now and see look here so even within a uh, triple line iteration triple line we can see the cost is still going on let's say if you increase the iteration further right if you in increase the iteration with uh, some more uh, you know in, in you know higher value like 1500 or something like that and uh, let's assume that in that case if you get a triple 1.01109 Uh, say zero triple one point zero one one zero nine. If it if the cost becomes stationary, there are no change in the cost at a specific iteration, right? So we can conclude that. So we you know we can stop uh, at this iteration. For example, at uh, iteration nine nine seven onwards, you know you don't see any drop in cost, 
the cost remains same. We don't see any drop in cost. That means you know you can use uh, the iteration triple nine seven because after nine nine seven we don't see any decrease in the cost. It remains uh, constant or stationary. Right. So in that case, you can conclude that for this iteration. Uh, the algorithm converges. We don't see you know any more uh, drop in cost. Okay. Okay. The um, disadvantage with the, the batch gradient descent algorithm is um, right. It uses for each iteration or for each step, it uses um, at the entire training data set or entire data. It takes longer time. Uh, right, it, it takes a longer time, right? And again, it, it requires a lot of um, resources, memory. And also it is very slow, right? On a very large uh, data set. So hence it becomes, right, a very computationally expensive to do the batch gradient descent. But uh, this is great for uh, the convex function, okay? And uh, it, it scales well with the number of features. You, okay, now the next question is, um, why should I use gradient descent? Why can't I use linear regression? What is the difference between these two? Okay, in the case of uh, the difference in the interview, they ask you the simple answer is this one. Okay, uh, you have so here uh, you need to uh, you need to find out the optimal value for your alpha. You need to uh, you know you need to keep uh, increase you you need to keep increase your alpha value right you need to uh, keep increase the alpha value but uh, in the case of uh, linear regression you don't have to use any learning rate right you don't have to use any hyperparameter other thing is uh, when you use more number of uh, data and importantly when you are using more number of features the columns in that kind of situation linear regression is not good okay it is not uh, scalable that kind of situation the gradient uh, you know the gradient descent algorithm is uh, very you know it, it it is very much helpful okay so now the question is uh, okay uh, batch gradient descent it takes the entire training data for each step to compute the value for intercept and slope okay but especially especially when you work with huge volume of data right it takes longer time Okay, so it uses the whole training sample, whereas uh, we have something that's called stochastic gradient descent. In the case of stochastic gradient descent, what it does is for each iteration, it randomly samples uh, the given data and uh, it uses only one record. That is the beauty of uh, stochastic gradient descent algorithm. Okay, the difference between the, the batch gradient and the stochastic gradient descent, right? The, it in the case of stochastic gradient, it computes the gradient using a single training example, which one stochastic gradient. Batch gradient is uh, very slow and it is computationally very expensive. And whereas in the case of stochastic gradient descent, it is faster and uh, less computationally expensive than the batch gradient descent algorithm. Okay. And the batch gradient descent, what we have seen now, right? It is not suggest for huge training samples Instead, you can go ahead with stochastic gradient descent. So that is the one can be used for large number of samples. But the advantage with uh, batch gradient descent is it is deterministic in nature. That means uh, it is, uh, you know, it's kind of accurate. Okay. The, uh, you know, the, you can reduce the error like anything. Whereas in the case of stochastic algorithm, stochastic gradient descent, it is, as the name suggests, it is stochastic in nature. What is stochastic? It is kind of a random, right? Sometimes it gives you the uh, accurate or it reduces the error like anything, right? Uh, and uh, sometimes it, it cannot, right? Uh, that is the one thing. The simple thing which you need to remember when it comes to stochastic gradient descent for each iteration, it uh, takes the uh, sample, it takes the only one, it samples only one record for each iteration, okay? Now I'll show you how to implement uh, the stochastic gradient descent in Python. Just give me a second. Okay, L is equal to 0 0.01. Okay, and uh, in slice, the learn learning rate is same. Here also we'll be using the learning rate. 
only thing is here uh, the number of data points right so here what i do is i use um, something like for example i just use some other variable total samples for the sake of uh, difference okay total samples here i say um t sample is equal to x dot what is shape function will give shape function will give you the rows and columns but when you use uh, the index value zero it picks up the row only right it will return the row so in the for the in the x variable which is nothing but the independent variable for this independent variable right how many number of records are there that is the one we store it in same i am going to little bit change it more or less you know you can use the same thing also here okay in this case what is number of here n is equal to because we are doing some kind of sampling here and uh, any of the same step can be used if you want you can do the same step as of uh, now whatever i did it okay the next thing is i just use the same script because uh, iteratively we need to compute the value for gradient and and then we need to multiply the gradient for with the uh, learning rate and you need to subtract that from your current portion in order to get the in a new value for mnc everything is same here i'm going to remove the what i do is okay here up to this uh, it's all fine okay what i do is i here um i say or idx i'm going to there is a function called random okay random rand uh, it will generate the value randomly because when it comes to stochastic um, gradient descent we are randomly sampling the training data okay and to get the and get the you know the sample data okay so we basically we are sampling the data here we are not using the entire data okay for each iteration we are using only one record that to this sam randomly sampled a record okay you just think that way t sample minus 1 okay and the next one is uh, i just say i am going to change the data set that's all okay sample underscore x is equal to x of or idx and um, the next step what i do is uh, so yeah first of all i should uh, use the random library there is something called package called random import random otherwise it will not work import random random dot uh, rand um, int this is the function look here if i specify uh, 0 to 3 right between 0 to 3 randomly sample the value okay between 0 and 3 you randomly give me some number when i execute this one more time look here i'll get different value for each um, time you execute you'll get different different value randomly it picks up the you know value it randomly picks up uh, you know some value between 0 and 3 right each and every time when you execute it you will get you know different uh, samples randomly selected value between these two values got it it is a random okay okay so now what i do is here oh, the next thing is um, same thing i need to create uh, the sample data for the dependent variable okay and that's all so next one is here i am going to replace all my x by sample x see instead of using the x and y what we are doing is we are using uh, you know a, fun a function called random dot uh, rand int so what we are doing is what we are saying here is uh, you know zero right a zero to total number of records minus 1 let's say in this data set i have 100 records are there so 100 minus 1 99 because 0 to 99 records you randomly pick up uh, any one of the record and then you assign it to this variable now what i do is um, i need to use uh, sample x instead of using capital x i'm using uh, you know the the sampled value and here what i do is uh, i'm going to use the same thing here pred y pred and uh, 
instead of y, I am going to replace that by sample y. Only my, you know, the x and y variable getting changed here. That's all. No print. Insert. And then, yeah, this is the one sample underscore y. Anything else to be changed? That's it, right? Um, Oh, okay. Sample oh, here, right? So mistake, spelling mistake. Yeah, sample, sample Y, good. And uh, okay, very good. Uh, Jeevan, very good. You are doing good job. Okay, I just execute this one unexpected in indent. Okay, here, M equal to, okay, okay, okay. Here, what, because I did not use a function, right? For I in range uh, unexpected in that. Okay. So in this case, what it is, okay, I just um, do it one more time. And then I just, okay, okay, sorry, or IDX. So here I have to do this one, right? Cost one by N uh, into. Okay, what I do is so for the time being, I will just ignore this. So in four, okay, here also I'm posing the same issue. Sample X comma Y, okay, here random int zero T sample minus one, just give me a second, let me just. Okay, sum is not required, sum is not required. Look here, it's working fine, right? So now we are able to implement the stochastic gradient descent. Okay, now what we do is we will do the same step and we will take a look at this one. We will see how, you know, how much error got reduced at the last iteration. In the last iteration 11.0109. Uh, and in this case, 11.019. Uh, yeah, more or less same, right? Uh, let me just copy this, sorry, and only this one. This is my gradient descent, especially when you work with the huge volume of data, right? You will get to know, okay? And uh, you will see the difference, actual difference. When you work with this small data, the first one is my last iterations, uh, slope, intercept, and cost. And second one is, um, uh, yeah, iteration triple line. We don't see, yeah, the slope, slope and intercept value got changed. And the cost is triple one dot zero nine eight eight seven three five six one, but the we can see the difference in a slope value, right? So here one zero one we are getting zero two. Okay, so now what I do is uh, I just use uh, okay here we cannot yeah I did not use a function very good. So what we will do is here instead of x I use a sample. underscore x plus c anything wrong uh, you mentioned yeah sample underscore oh sorry <laughs> i need to comment this right this is not a command okay why pred so now with this uh, we are able to make some prediction Okay, for, with the new, you know, for gradient descent, we got different um, optimized value for M and C. Let's assume that this is an optimized value, okay, the M and C. You can probably play around with the iterations, okay? You can play around with the iterations. And uh, sorry, the next one is, uh, yeah, I'm going to use the same script here. And we'll see how best my model fits with the stochastic gradient descent here. Mm 
y pred y pred okay so i should have used some other name for this variable and here it's recording right okay good Okay, when you use uh, min or max, right? Uh, because it's a simple uh, value, right? So what I do is, okay, I, I need to use some value here, sample X and sample Y, okay? But in this case, it is not possible because I'm using min and max. When you use min and max or any uh, sum or any aggregation, you need to use uh, this one, the iterable function, okay? But here it is not uh, that good. Ld dot plot uh, x comma y. Okay, we will do one thing directly. I just use sample x. Ideally, when you use min or right, so that is the one can help you to get that one. Sample x by print and uh, okay, 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 here. It's not giving that. Okay, so I will check and come back. Okay, so for this, how we can plot it. Okay, so here we can use this logic, right? So we can uh, specify the x-axis and y-axis. The x-axis min x, max x, I'm using it. Okay, minimum and uh, maximum x. And uh, here I use this one. Since it is, uh, you know, returning only one value, we are not able to plot it. But with this itself, we can make out, right? So the cost is more or less same. Not more or less, it's same, right? Exactly same. But uh, only thing is the value for um, slope and intercept is changing, okay? Mm, different. Obviously, uh, since there is a change in this, and see here, the intercept is uh, point. Well, let us see the yeah, slope is also changing, right? So there is, there is a change, uh, 1.47, 1.38, you know, minor difference. But otherwise it is okay, okay? Only thing is plotting thing, I will just check and I'll come back, okay, how to do that. So this is how you can implement uh, the stochastic gradient descent. With this, we can do comparison, okay, which one is better, especially the stochastic gradient descent algorithm is very much uh, helpful in, when you work with huge volume of data, but any of it's uh, you know very less number of data, that's the reason why we don't see uh, much uh, you know improvement. And for you, you just uh, you know play around with uh, uh, you know, by increasing the iterations and also you can play around with this one. Okay. And probably you reduce it and increase it. Right. Um, so if you, um, if you make it 0.01, it will not uh, good. Right. So always use, you know, very less value for the learning rate. It is always uh, good if you use a lesser value for the learning rate. Fine guys. Now you understood how to implement uh, the uh, stochastic gradient descent and um, gradient descent okay and i will just uh, save this as we can uh, make it uh, you know more modular okay i will uh, probably share another script right so but anyhow this is the uh, you know basic thing you need to but how you can improve this code that you can take a look at that, uh, you know, the, the, the PN uh, Python notebook. I will share that one also, don't worry, okay?